Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Anyagulu, and this is the point in the show that I introduce our guest analyst who is here for the rest of the programme and who will give us his personal take on the news and issues of the day. And tonight I'm joined by Arise News Analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper, Mahmoud Jega. Good to see you, Mahmoud. Thank you, Olga Charles. Let's start with um, Professor Usman Yusuf, who was on top of the programme, talking about that... Um, accidental attack on, on that village in Kaduna State. Mm. He clearly was incensed no. by that mistake, and I think any normal Nigerian would, would be. be. Mm. Um, how can that have been an accident? Unfortunately, it was not the first time that this happened. Uh, one of the worst cases previously was what happened at Ran in Kalabalge local government in Borro State. I can't remember the exact year, but uh, it was an IDP camp that the Air Force that time, not Army, mm. uh, bombed. And a lot of uh, people uh, died. And uh, the same kind of excuse that they thought they were uh, Boko Haram people running. They said, but this is an IDP camp with a lot of uh, foreign... Uh, I mean, surely it must be pretty obvious. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. The same thing with uh, this. Uh, like the prof said, it is extremely important to conduct a very thorough investigation. Absolutely. And as he said, not by the army. The army can do its own uh, internal investigation, but uh, there should be an external investigation yes. because, uh, just as he suspected, most probably lethal weapons were left in the hands of relatively junior officers to decide when to fire. Right. Because otherwise, a very experienced uh, officer, not to mention the civilian authorities, and uh, I read many books about American military operations. In critical situations, the Secretary of Defense retains the power yeah. to give the order to open fire. And sometimes the president mm. himself will go and sit in the situation room, and then the admirals will open charge, yes, they will yeah. show him these are the planes, or these are the ships, and these are the targets. And if he is convinced, then he will give the authority to fire, just to prevent uh, this kind uh, yes. of things. Even, for example, the, the, the operation to kill Osama bin Laden. President Obama was sitting in the Oval Office yeah. with watching Secretary the of Defense, whole thing. watching the whole thing, yeah. and making decisions yeah. along the way. And, you know, he retained the right to call off the Absolutely. operation at a certain stage if he saw that there are going to be uh, a true. lot of civilian casualties. Now, in this case, like the military explained, if you are pursuing uh, terrorists, you had uh, drones or other surveillance aircraft, you saw them, once they run into a community, then you really have to call yeah. off the attack and plan for next time. Mm. I remember what an old judge told me uh, some years ago, that uh, when human li life is involved. He said, uh, in, in matters of capital punishment, this is similar, it is better to acquit 10 guilty people yeah. than to convict one that is innocent person. True. Absolutely. That true. is the rule of judges. And it should better be the rule of the military too. If you are pursuing terrorists and they mm. go and uh, immerse themselves in, 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 in a civilian community, then you have to call off the attack. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I suspect it has to be a junior and inexperienced officer who would have given the order to shoot. If generals were involved or ministers were involved, certainly if the president himself were... There might have been more discretion. There would have been more discretion. So yeah. Okay, well, let them come out. We'll find them next yeah. time. Yeah. So I, I have to wonder... And I suppose that was why the, there was so much anger and passion, because he was always making reference to the human element mm. in all of this. Mm. Women, children, there on a religious sort of festival, yes. marking the, the birth of the Prophet Muhammad. Mm. I mean, for ordinary people, mm. what does all this mean if where they live is believed to be basis for terrorist activity? I mean, what must like life be like in those areas? It is terrible. They are already suffering from mm. the activities of the uh, bandits and the terrorists. Let, let's just say one thing. 
Nobody has said that the military did this in deliberately. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't have. We don't believe that mm. the Nigerian military will uh, sh deliberately shoot at civilians. So it's more likely to be uh, either incompetence uh, or poor training or, or poor, just poor intelligence. Monitoring. Exactly. Yeah. Or because they might, the intelligence thing might have come and said, right, they're, they're terrorists yeah. here, send the drone there. Yeah. And the person just says, yes, sir. Just fire. And directs the drone. And he says, you know, once you get them in vision, fire. It could be like that. Although, you know, uh, many times when the military issues statements mm. about uh, uh, bombing operations in the, in the Northeast, they do take the trouble to say that uh, reconnaissance right. uh, confirmed right. that this was uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, before they actually take action. attack. Yeah. It's not just because you suspect that these are mm. uh, terrorists because the consequences... Well, I mean, it would be, be based on, on whatever intelligence they got. That is true. But the intelligence people would be different from the people firing the drones. Yes, the I drone uh, operator would just be take instructions then, to go there and fire. Then there must be a supervising... Yeah. Uh, there should be very senior one who yeah. will evaluate both the intelligence mm. and the operators before the final order is given to 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 fire no, especially absolutely. in a huge crowd uh, of people i mean 85 mm. casualties that, that, that's a that's doses. a pretty large and in fact they're suspecting that maybe there are more who are dead yeah, yeah of course, because, because it was actually it was actually two attacks yeah. you know the first one happened yeah and the people, the survivors, rushed out to, to try and recover the bodies, and then yeah, another the one struck. One. Now, how could that? Possibly? I mean, that is just that's that's that, that's very concerning. That was very very concerning. Yeah. Which is why I agree be? with you that um, the investigation yeah. that President Tinubu has ordered really has to be thorough and seen to be objective and independent uh, yeah. too. Well, maybe because the prof was saying a public judicial commission of inquiry. Okay. If there are certain security issues involved, maybe the government may not want yeah, to yeah, do that a is public that, that's a uh, good inquiry. Point, exactly. But yeah. even if it is a private inquiry, it should be it should be independent and very, very thorough. Yes, yes. Okay, let's move on to Emeke Hedio has let me call it his final attempt mm. to try and get back into government house in Oweri. Mm -hmm. Justice Abubakar described the appeal. Mm. Um, as strange, frivolous, baseless, unwarranted, and vexatious. Mm -hmm. And then find um, the, lawyer. the lawyer, Michael Zekome, 40 million naira. I mean, um, and, and said that the motion was a calculated design to make mockery of the Supreme Court. I mean, that is, you know, if, 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 if that isn't below the belt... <laughs> <laughs> or actually this one all over is, the body, uh, really. All over the, the body. I cannot remember an occasion when Supreme Court justices spoke in those times mm. and find the lawyer. That's for extraordinary. For that matter, a hefty amount. A hefty like, amount uh, 40 of money. Million. Well, I heard what you are against the barrister was saying. Yes. I'm not in a position to <laughs> say much about the legal arguments between yes. the Supreme Court and the lawyers. The only thing I remember as a reporter and layman mm. was that uh, hope there was some substitution because the outgoing governor of Imo State in 2019, Rochas Okorocha, mm. wanted Uche Ngosu, who we understand was his son-in-law, yeah. to become the APC governorship candidate. And the then chairman, national chairman of APC, uh, Adam Soshimole, yeah. uh, very volatile man himself. He said things like he will not allow some governors, and that was uh, Okorocha in Imo, Yari in Anambra, and I think Amosun in Ogun right. to dictate. You know, he was virtually fighting them. Yeah. There was an open fight, which was what led to that situation in Zamfara. And in Imo too, APC was able to block uh, Okorocha from making Uche yes, Mosu yes. the, the APC ca the candidate. candidate. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know this, I can't remember this thing that the barrister was saying about Uzodima came third in the primary, but what I understand was that the APC managed 
to make the substitution and make him the candidate, right. which was why INEC accepted him. But as we all remember, he came fourth in the general yeah, election. Yeah, he did. After some votes were cancelled, mm. but he now went all the he way to the Supreme Court. He went and argued that those cancelled votes should be reinstated. Should be re and if and they that are, was, that he would win. The basically. Supreme Court right. brought them back, and that's how he, mm. he, he won. So I don't know this argument that the barrister was making that Uche Umosu was the candidate simultaneously of APC and, and of AA. AA yeah. And therefore, those two parties stood uh, disqualified. I don't know about that because certainly Hope Uzojima yeah. was the APC candidate and he well, contested that's why the I election. was saying to him that mm. clearly there must be provision for substituting a yeah, candidate yeah. if he's disqualified. Yeah, I think so. You I know. think so. Mm. But um, the, the bottom line is that even though a lot of people sympathize with Emeka Hedio mm. and believe that he's actually the person who ought to be there, mm. the law has spoken and that's the end of the road for his ambition. It's painful, but uh, court judgments at all levels are usually painful if you don't win. Mm. Doubly so if it is the Supreme Court. Yeah. And the only thing is what Chief Aolo said in 1979 when he lost at the Supreme Court. Reporter said, Chief, where do you go now? He said, to God. <laughs> uh, that's, that's I like easy. that. On that note, let's all go to God, shall yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> Mahmoud Jega, thank you very much indeed. And of course, uh, Mahmoud is the Arise News Analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.